Welcome back to season one of Snubs and Dubs, where we're talking the snubs and dubs of the 69th Academy Award for Best Picture. I'm your host, Kyle Tobiason, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Jason Miller. Jason, Aww. how are you doing today? Kyle, I'm doing fantastic. That's great to hear. Did you watch anything in the last week? No. No? That's no, I yeah. haven't had a whole <laughs> lot of time to, uh, one day I'll watch a movie uh, casually for my own enjoyment. I swear one day it's going to happen, but it was not this week. No. How about you? What did you watch this well, week? As I alluded to last episode, we had tickets to Shang Chi, and yeah. obviously I did see it. That's good. And That's what tickets do for you. It was good. Excellent. It was good. I, my it? roommates really liked it. Yeah. So I don't trust them for almost anything um, except for paying rent. They've done <laughs> that pretty good so far. They really liked it. They said okay. it was a very good movie. Where would you like in your general casual ranking of like MCU movies? Oh, where are you tossing that in there? It's kind of middle of the pack for me. Okay. Because it That's definitely fine. had its high highs. Yeah. But it had some serious lows that Ooh. I just can't overlook. Like some of the dialogue was so corny and so like I just hate that. blatantly like just thrown in there. Mm-hmm. Like they they literally have a line early on where like two of the characters are like we've known each other for 10 years like you should trust me to do this which is like it's not for the characters it's for you that's really it's bad story it's telling. really bad yeah yeah and it was delivered by aquafina who i have like a, a kind of a weird relationship with in terms of my enjoyment with oh, her do, oh not no yeah there's no tea there <laughs> damn it um because like I don't really like her comedy stuff. It just doesn't hit with me. Mm -hmm. But like I saw The Farewell, which she plays a more dramatic role and she killed it in that. And so I loved her in that sort of thing. But like her usual comedy shtick, which is what she was doing in here, I don't really vibe with. And it was the same sort of stuff here. And so like I kind of that kind of soured me a little bit. But Simu Liu is so fucking cool as yeah. this like hero. He's so great. And the action was top tier. That's what I heard. Really good action sequences, if not amazing dialogue. But the fighting people, that's good. Yeah. I'm and glad. that's that's what really hooked me. And there's like a one early on that like really grabs you with like his dad and like his mom. That's like it's just oh, a so... fight scene with his dad and his mom. That's yeah, exciting. It's awesome. That's sorry wicked. for the minor spoilers. It's in the first like two minutes of the movie. So oh wait, he actually does fight them. Yeah. They, oh, they I was making like it a silly little... there. Oh well, <laughs> not like Whoop, a see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, and I've also oh uh, I finished season one of Euphoria. Uh, I've never even heard of that. No? It's no. an HBO series. It's kind of like a teen high school drama Ooh, about sultry. this girl, uh, Rue, played by Zendaya, oh, who yes. struggles with addiction and meets a new best friend and their shenanigans. And it was pretty good. I love friends, especially <laughs> your best ones. <laughs> it was like the ending wasn't... I. It ended on a way that was like, you're going to learn more next season or oh. like, it's like there's going to be more happening next season. And I was like, can't we just, can't you just give the information yeah. in the first season? Does yeah. it have to, you got to bring, if it's just good enough, people will come back. Mm-hmm. You don't need like a collar on them to bring them to season two. Yeah. Just be a good season one, my friends. And there wasn't like, there was growth in the main character, but there wasn't like enough for me to feel like, the whole season wrapped up nicely. Yeah. And so like the whole story isn't done yet and you have to wait for season two, which like, I guess isn't that much longer because we're what we've, I just watched it like a couple of weeks ago. So like, I think the new season's going to be this year, maybe early next year, hopefully. Yeah. So we'll see, but yeah. yeah. Well, Kyle, you know what we're about to watch <laughs> ourselves eat some snacks. Ooh. Oh, shit. This is Snubs and Grubs, oh, Volume it's back, 2. <laughs> We're not done yet. Um, we promised earlier that it would be movie food. Mm-hmm. This is not movie food. I would actually argue that it would be. All right, it's movie food. We did it. It's like, I would bring this to a movie. You could. No one's going to stop you. But what we have here is the new spicy chicken McNugs from oh, McDonald's and some dip and sauce. Kyle, you ready oh, yeah. to dive in? Yeah, I'm going to try it bare bones we first. Gotta, yeah, I'll do and plain then, one and first. And then I'll try a little, and then we'll see. A little barbie. I think hot mustard's going to be good. Oh, yeah? Go I think first. a little hot, hot. All right. All right, ready? Let's go. All right, are you ready for right, a ready. devastating crunch? Three, two, uh, one. Cheers. Devastating. <laughs> <laughs> so crunchy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, it tastes like a chicken nugget. Mm-hmm. A little at the end I there. I can feel a little bit. I can feel it burn a little mm-hmm. bit. Yeah, I mean, there's there's heat. 
if this was a regular chicken McNugget, I'd be shocked, but pretty bare minimum heat. I would say so too. Yeah. It's kind of run it kind of actually reminds me of the popcorn. Mm-hmm. Where like it tastes like white cheddar and this one tastes like a nugget. Like yeah. Your normal chicken McNugget, but like the aftertaste of heat. Yeah. And it's that like, kind of lingers. Mm-hmm. I'm mm. gonna try, I wanna really try one with hot mustard. I think it's gonna right. be absolutely. I'm gonna go with the Barbie, so all right, right. With, with the sauce. With the Here sauce. Three, two, one. Mm. 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 It's fine. It's it's fine. Yeah. You know what might not help it? What? That these are absolutely ice cold. They are <laughs> below room temperature somehow. Yeah. They are colder than the environment they've been in for the last hour. What would no. you rate these? Man, like the same as chicken McNuggets. Yeah. They're no different. There's no. a little heat at the end, whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't I'll think it's you. worth the extra effort. Yeah. I no. Think probably middle of the road. Like, no, Gail. Right now, if you like spicy food and you were going to McDonald's for chicken nuggets anyways, yeah, get these. If you weren't already driving to McDonald's, don't change your path to stop for these. <laughs> Which you did. You went out of your way to get these. <laughs> yep. Which is all in the name of the content. So it's for the podcast. We're eating spicy nugs so that you, you don't have to. If you don't do want to. to. <laughs> if it's convenient and you want to try it, mm-hmm. I say do it. It was like, did you ever try the chicken McMuffin? Like the, the, the breakfast chicken sandwich? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can order. Okay, hold on, hold on here. Before this was a regularly known menu item, yeah. I have been ordering these off menu for years. No way. You just ask for a chicken McMuffin and they'll do it. So this has not been a life this has not been a game changer. I've just been having this for a long time. See, that changed the game for me. That was one that I tried and I was like, this shit fucking slaps. Mm-hmm. You know what? They're probably like Jason Miller has been ordering <laughs> these for about four months now. <laughs> And he gets like three a week. That's a problem. We need to normalize this so that yep. he doesn't feel so insecure <laughs> about the norm- number of chicken McMuffins that he's been ordering and forcing our beautiful employees <laughs> to make for him. Do you, so wait, when did you order these? I did it by accident once. And then they did it. And it was great. And then I kept doing it. <laughs> Sorry, I should clarify. Like, What time of day are you getting these? Oh, morning. Really? And they have chicken in the morning? Yep. Would, oh, they, yeah. would they have it or would they make it for you? They would have it. Like, It would be really quick. Oh. Yeah. And it's probably fresh because they don't really have chicken on hand that early. Right? I guess they did because I never had to wait for it. And it never seemed like fresher than any other chicken. Might have been yesterday's chicken. <laughs> <laughs> have you That's ever kind seen of sounding like yesterday's chicken in hindsight? <laughs> have you ever been to like um like a mall in the in at the time when they the, the food court places open up and there's that one Chinese place that you see roll out their like barrels of food from yesterday then they just dump it back into the 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 what are they called? Uh, like the trays? I yeah, don't know. the trays. Yeah, they yeah, just yeah. dump it back into the trays for today's uh, no, Patrons? I've never never witnessed that horror. It's um, horrible to watch, that and I've never eaten that. Terrifying. <laughs> um, no, I've only ever been in the food court for like a quick coffee and go. Yeah. So, yeah. Food court oh. Chinese, avoid, because yeah. it's probably from yesterday or hypothetically even even yeah, like the Yeah, it's hard before. to really pinpoint the date of origin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, well, now that we've killed eight minutes of this podcast already, we should probably get into today's legitimate topic, yeah. which is the 1996 movie Train Spotting. Of course, we are keeping in theme of our season one, which is covering the films from 1996, with ultimately asking the question, which film deserved to win the 69th Academy Award for Best Picture? This episode, though, if it wasn't different enough already with our lengthy stubs and grubs, <laughs> is going to be different in that we are going to be joined by a special guest midway through this episode. Okay, so they are going to join us after the plot breakdown, but before the stats, and it is going to be kind of cut out. So look forward to that. It's going to be a great time. Yeah, we have a lot of interesting uh, dialogue. Uh, we have our British expert coming in for this movie, <laughs> and it's needed. Because it's train spotting, yep. baby. <laughs> this also means we're going to try and abbreviate our usual run of the plot so that we can maximize our discussion time with the guest. But we're going to get to that later. So, Jason, have yes. you seen Train Spotting before? No. No. I, I did know about this movie. Right. Um, I knew that Ian McGregor was in it, although I did forget until <laughs> a shocking amount of time into the movie. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. This guy we've been looking at for an hour is Ewan McGregor. But otherwise, I didn't really know anything. I knew it was about drugs and heroin. Yeah. But that was like all I knew about it. It was like a druggy movie mm-hmm. um, that stars Ewan McGregor and is British. Yeah. 
It's all Actually, I knew. it's Scottish. Scot- well, you'd, I'm sorry. <laughs> I am so sorry to all of our fans <laughs> calling in from the great United Kingdom. <laughs> I'm going to get this wrong so many times all over this episode. It doesn't help that our guest is English. Is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kyle, did, how did you, you saw Trainspotting before. I've seen before. it before. Yeah. And actually, I saw it as a result of our guest who has showed me this movie couple years ago now oh yeah and so i had seen it before this is the first time i'd seen it in a couple years so it was interesting to go back to it because it was also my first time re-watching the movie and with watching it this week i watched it like basically three times i would say two times because yeah because i watched it once just to watch it Mm -hmm. and then i watched it a second time to get the plot which was a pretty abbreviated watch yeah and then me and the guest watched it yesterday That's also a lot of on a body you'd watch so i've seen it I've, i'm well versed in it by no this point kidding. <laughs> wow so if you were interested in train spotting or the book that it's based on i've included the links to the physical media related to it in the show notes if you buy it through our link it helps out the show or if you have any other amazon shopping to do in the meantime follow the general link and help out the show in the process a reminder that this conversation is going to be completely spoiler filled. So if you haven't seen Train Spotting yet, go ahead and do so and then return to this episode. Or if you don't care, just listen ahead. But let's jump into this, shall we? All right. Train Spotting. Heroin addict Mark Retton stumbles through bad ideas in sobriety attempts with his unreliable friends, Sick Boy, Bigby, Spud, and Tommy. He also has an underage girlfriend, Diane, along for the ride. After cleaning up and moving from Edinburgh to London, Mark finds he can't escape the life he left behind when Bigby shows up at his front door on the lamb and a scheming sick boy follows. Train Spotting was directed by Danny Boyle. Uh, the screenplay is written by John Hodge. Uh, it is based on the novel, uh, I believe from 1993, by Irvine Welsh. It stars Ewan McGregor as Mark Rentboy Renton, Ewan Bremner as Daniel Spud Murphy, Johnny Lee Miller as Simon David, Sick Boy Williamson. That's a lot of names in That's a row. That's a lot of names. <laughs> a lot of name going on there. Uh, Kevin McKidd as Francis Franco Bigby and Kelly McDonald as Diane. Uh, this has a pristine runtime of 93 minutes and was released Beauty. February 23rd in the United Kingdom and July 19th in the US of A and imagine worldwide as well after that. Kyle? What did you think of the film? I want to know <laughs> right now. I like it. Mm-hmm. Elaborate. I really liked it the first time. I think I liked it less after subsequent viewing. This is not a feel-good movie. I was shocked that you watched it so many times in a row because yeah. I would not be able to there ignore what I want to. that are really hard to watch. Yeah. And it's... Which is to its credit. Like, mm. it, it really brings you in and the shock value is necessary, I think, in some of these scenes to really get you the full spectrum of what drug addiction can look like. But what did you think of it? I really, I did enjoy it. I thought enjoyment is a weird way to put it because it was kind of like moving and also like scary off-putting. Yeah. So it was very well done. I really appreciated the movie because it's well put together. For sure. Good acting performances and everything like that. I don't want to watch it again, though, because it's kind of a hard thing to watch. It's <laughs> it not is. like a lightweight romp in the movie theater. This is no. you coming to terms with other people's addictions and relapse and people being bad friends. And yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. And obviously that will affect your score later on. But we'll, we'll oh, get will. to that in a bit. But for now, should we just jump into the plot? <laughs> yeah, let's jump into that plot. <laughs> so we start off with a voiceover, which is kind of iconic at this point. The choose life, choose a job, choose a career. I'm not going to try that for too long. It wasn't bad. Choose a family. Um, <laughs> you kept going. That <laughs> was better, actually, somehow. Yeah. <laughs> choose a fucking big television. Yeah, stuff like that. And so I actually wrote this, or I copied the whole thing down here, just in case I needed to go back to it later. Essentially, it's Renton, is, or Mark, he's, mm-hmm. he's kind of like explaining what normal people would choose for life. Uh, and yep. boring all, nerds. Yeah, all basically to say that he's not going to do this. So here we meet Mark Renton, Sick Boy, Begby, Spud, and Tommy as they play a football match. And then we kind of cut between that and Mark laying on the floor after a hit of heroin. Sick Boy, we learn, is obsessed with Sean Connery, which there's a <laughs> moment with this dealer later when he's asking about, like, Mark is asking about Sick Boy, and the dealer's like, 
well, he knows a lot about Sean Connery. <laughs> yeah. like, that's hardly a, <laughs> that's hardly an excuse to keep him around. <laughs> like, <laughs> so then Mark explains that he does heroin for pleasure and he wants to live for pleasure, basically, not necessarily just to live to live or to mm. live to have a job, career, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't do heroin for business, just pleasure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Begbie, Tommy, and his parents, Mark's parents, are all against it. And Mark claims that he's going to go off heroin. He sets himself up in a room. And once he's done, he goes for one last hit before the Valium that he steals from his mother takes in. He's given suppositories to bring him down gradually in a hit. So Mark shoves him up his ass. And suddenly he needs a ship because the heroin has worn off from his last hit. And we end up at the worst toilet in Scotland. And for this so early on... <laughs> yeah, this really tells you what you're about to get into. Because <laughs> yeah. you have the option to leave right here. <laughs> yeah. I watched this with my mom. <laughs> <laughs> which was uh, which hard to hard to watch. And like it kind of sets the tone really quick. I, I told her, I was like, it's a little bit gross sometimes. And she's like, oh, that's fine. I was like, okay, okay. here we go. <laughs> but yeah, this toilet is nasty. And of course, he shits out the suppositories that the guy just gave him. So he has to dive into this abyss... Of the toilet which was really gross and then like really weird as he just like ends up swimming to yeah this. where he fully submerges yeah yeah but like i thought he was kind of tripping but then he's wet the whole way home i guess yeah i th- i don't know exactly what they were going for there but it really showed yeah. the depths of his desperation at that point <laughs> and the depths of the toilet of the toilet <laughs> impressive so sick boy also gives up heroin but it's just to show up mark just to show him that he can do it better than he can but as a job interview and he lies on his application just to kind of blow it i think to stay on unemployment which is funny because the guy that interviewing him says like you didn't need to lie on your application you refer to here by the job board yeah <laughs> like you would have got your foot in the door anyway <laughs> which is funny begby tells a story about pool that's kind of hard to understand i told you to put on subtitles did you was oh yeah subtitles? right away okay oh yeah i started with subtitles my blu-ray doesn't have subtitles <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> i struggled so hard there were times when somehow they didn't help having subtitles <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah begby tells the story and then tommy explains it later to mark in a different way so while tommy is explaining this story mark takes Tommy's sex tape and puts it into on a hundred best goals videotape. This is just the start of him being a bad friend to Tommy. We also see that Begby gets off on fighting people. This is his addiction. Everyone has their own addiction in this movie. It's part of the theme. A lot of them heroin. Yeah. And then Sick Boy and Mark watch Tommy's sex tape in a very weird thing to do with your friend for your friend. Yep. (laughs) This makes Mark realize that he's missing some loving and so he goes to the bar with the guys and they kind of tries to approach different women all hopes kind of seems lost until he sees diane deny another man's advances and then he decides to chase diane down dan accepts mark's advance and they go back to diane's house to have a little sexy time in the meantime we're cutting kind of between tommy getting busy with his lady and spud who has been denied sex for six weeks due to a cosmopolitan <laughs> magazine but he passes out before he can get some sexy time tommy's lady wants to watch their sex tape while they have sex but they soon realize that the tape is not what they thought it was it is the 100 best goals tape this results in her breaking up with tommy which yeah mark really ruined tommy's life oh my god we'll We'll get get to to that that. but he fucked him up so mark wakes up and finds that diane is a high schooler (laughs) yikes Uh uh-oh bud wakes up to find that he's shit the bed a lot and (laughs) tommy and his girlfriend go to the video store right before open to see if they can find the sex tape spud tries to wash the sheets by himself but he ends up throwing shit everywhere which is another just gross moment it's just gross but it's nasty um, yeah. another like shit moment what is this movie obsessed with just grossing you out with shit i don't know but diane then blackmails mark essentially into a relationship which like Mark was kind of making the right move here. He was like, you know, you're underage. Like, that, I can't do that with you. And then Diane's like, I'll tell the police if you don't hang out with me again. Which, like, kind of was, like, gross. Yeah. In a weird way. Um, that's not good. No. No. Not good. No, He's kind of fucked. But then, like, Diane gave me weird signals sometimes. We'll get into this in our conversation. But, like, she was nice. 
and she did a lot for Mark like later on. But then like she was kind of like creepy and weird at the same time. Yeah, I feel like they just didn't show enough of that relationship. They yeah. just kind of had Diane interject it a couple times, so it yeah. didn't make sense. I'm sure that relationship made more sense in the book though. Maybe, yeah. So after this horrible night, Tommy, Mark, Spud, and Sick Boy go for a walk in the country before giving up and going back to heroin. Tommy wants to try heroin because he's heartbroken, and Mark lets it happen. Another quick incident of Mark being a horrible friend. After a serious binge that involves stealing TVs from senior homes, <laughs> uh, yep. robbing an American tourist, and doing every drug imaginable, the baby that was in the drug dealer's house, which we let, later learned was Sick Boy's baby, has died due to neglect. Yeah, that was is, kind. That was a hard scene in general. Yeah, which, like, that's. Sometimes this movie is like, it doesn't really show like drug use negatively in some ways. It shows them partying, having fun, you know, getting high and enjoying their life. But then it shows this, which yeah. is like the bad side of this. Cause like they, yeah, this baby was just not looked after for this yeah. entire binge. Well, fortunately, they did more drugs after. So that kind of suited yeah, things exactly. over. Yeah, that, exactly. That's their response just to do more drugs, mm -hmm. which, and I think that girl then dies because you don't really see her after this point. Maybe they just go different ways. I don't know. So Spud and Mark get caught shoplifting. Spud gets six months in jail. And then Mark gets to walk because he's enrolled in an addiction program. They celebrate at a pub later. And Begbie's just a huge dick to Spud's mother. Like basically telling him her that uh, like it's her fault for raising him wrong. Yeah, I didn't see the need for that. But I no. think that's just Begbie's character that he needed to fight someone. And there was no one else in that bar. So he'll just yeah. yell at a mother whose son was just sent off to prison. Yeah. Such an asshole. <laughs> I mean, uh, not like that guy. Yeah, no. Um, Mark then leaves this bar and decides to get another hit of heroin after he just got to walk because he was enrolled in a program. This results him overdosing and ending up in a hospital. His parents pick him up and then lock him into his room to get clean. During this, Mark trips and imagines... Not trips and falls. He He's <laughs> tripping balls. He was just coming... He had drug withdrawals. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And he's imagining people, uh, including Diane and the dead baby, which is crawling across his ceiling, which that was also a little bit gross. Also spooky. Yeah, especially because the baby is clearly animatronic and the face is really weird. The face didn't make sense because I couldn't <laughs> tell if it was trying to be an alive or dead baby. It yeah. ended up right in the middle. <laughs> It did, yeah. So Mark ends up, you know, getting clean at this point and his parents get him checked for HIV or AIDS. Mark's clean. And then Mark goes to check in on Tommy, who has had a down spiral of a life after getting his first hit. And Tommy does have HIV in his pretty rough shape, obviously, thanks to Mark. Diane visits Mark after this and tells him that he needs something new to keep him busy or distracted. So Mark goes to London and starts working in real estate. Uh, he's doing pretty well. And Diane later writes to Mark to kind of keep him updated on his friends. Tells him that Sick Boy is now some sort of pimp and Begbie is on the run for armed robbery. And as he's reading this, Begbie shows up at Mark's apartment and settles in pretty much in the only way that Begbie can. Uh, as like a total, an asshole. <laughs> yeah, a total asshole. Begbie then bets on a horse as he's like staying inside. They win this bet and they go out to celebrate. Begbie ends up with a transgendered person, which he obviously does not want to be with. Yeah, um, because Mark is just talking about how, you know, you can get your kicks from anything. Yeah. And, you know, love's love. Uh, mm -hmm. Having a fun time is having a fun time. And yeah. uh, Begbie was just really angry at the world because <laughs> yeah. of this scenario yeah he was i liked what mark said here something about like eventually there's not going to be men or women there's just going to be wankers <laughs> yeah <laughs> which you know is he wrong who Amen, knows Amen, brother <laughs> sick boy then also shows up and he sells mark's tv and asks mark if he wants to sell his passport mark then locks up his valuables including his passport in a bank and sets up Begbie and Sick Boy in one of his places that he was showing as a realtor. Tommy then dies of toxoplasmosis due to cat shit from a kitten he tried to buy for his ex-girlfriend. He was dead for s three weeks, but the kitten was fine. So I, I bet you the kitten was eating him. That's what I, I bet, bet you too. the kitten I was eating him. Was. And like, it's interesting that he didn't even die from you know HIV or or AIDS, mm -hmm. whichever he had. He died from like. Just cat shit. Yeah. Although when you have uh, HIV AIDS, your body's immune response is completely suppressed. So yeah, a lot of things can kill you and it's probably related to that. Yeah. 
Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. After Tommy's funeral, Sick Boy tells Mark, Spud, and Begby about a drug deal they need Mark for because Mark has the two thousand pound that they need. Mark initially re- resists, but then accepts and has to test the heroin, which was kind of like a oh god sort of scene. Yeah, he in quotation has to test the heroin. Yeah, yeah. because he's the only one, I guess. Only one who can do the <laughs> heroin. Unfortunate. Yeah. The crew then travel back to London and Mark does another shot of heroin just to spite Begby, which I, I kind of thought was fine. Yeah, anytime <laughs> you're spiting Begby, I'm on your team, even yeah. if it takes heroin. So yeah. we really don't like Begby. Yeah, they meet up with the buyer in London. They sell the heroin for 16,000 pounds, then leave the hotel to celebrate. At the bar, Sick Boy goes to the bathroom and Begby goes to the bar. Mark asks Spud if he wants to run away with the money. So already starting the conversation of ripping each other off. Begby runs into a guy at the bar, which results in spilling beer all over his suit, Begby's suit. Begby then shoves a pint glass into this guy's face and pulls his knife. Spud tries to stop Begby, but cuts his hand in the process. And then there's like this weird confrontation between Mark and Begby where Begbie's like wanting him to bring a cigarette and the bag and like he's ugh. he just wanted to be like the big dog. Oh yeah. And he's kind of short. Like yeah. he's kind of got short man syndrome. He's kind of got a lot of syndrome going around, but that's <laughs> yeah. one of them. Yeah. So then the crew goes back to a hotel room. Mark wakes up at night at night quote because it's early in the morning. <laughs> yeah, everyone's just this could be like 2 p.m. in all honesty. Yeah, honestly. Mark wakes up until everyone's asleep and then he takes the money off of Begby for himself and leaves. We get this kind of quick moment between Mark and Spud where Spud's just like, "No, don't do this" cuz Spud's awake and he looks at him, he's crying, but Mark just is like, "So, see you later." <laughs> and then yeah. he leaves. So Mark leaves with the money. And he goes and leaves a little bit in the safety deposit box for Mark or for Spud. Begby then destroys the hotel room in response, gets arrested. And we leave on a flip of the narration that started off where Mark decides to choose life and choose the fucking big television and choose the children and all that shit. And he's going to be a a better person. But that's train spotting. Yeah, something about there being a train spotting too makes me think he did not just become a good person right away. <laughs> I didn't see train spotting too. Can't no. imagine it's a great movie. He's not addicted to heroin at some point. I mean, I have seen train spotting too. And I'm pretty sure he's clean when he starts. The really? Movie. Yep. Well, I was wrong. But I think it's, I can't remember. I saw it when it came out, which is a few years ago now. But we're not going to answer any more questions because we're going to now cut to our conversation with our guest. So we'll get into that right now. <laughs> Now it's time to welcome the first guest into season one of Snubs and Dubs. We are welcoming in Molly Ann. Molly, welcome. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Molly is our here. UK correspondent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, Molly Ann funny. is possibly best well known for being the creator behind the Lucina Main YouTube channel, where she posts funny and exciting gaming videos, primarily the free to play apex legends in arenas she is also known for her nearly five-year role as my girlfriend of which she has been (laughs) long overdue for any awards recognition molly how are you feeling today i feel good a little little bit nervous of the of the podcast but yeah we're not we're not that scary you do know us personally (laughs) i know i know (laughs) it's just nerve-wracking yeah and you can get to know every single listener personally. Everyone DM Molly after you've listened to this episode <laughs> so Molly can get to know you and feel a little more comfortable in her role as guest speaker. Oh, yeah. God. Well, Molly, we brought you in today because you seemingly are, I guess, an our experts? Maybe our expert, or do you just like really like this movie, right? Yeah, yeah I've read the books and I love oh. the film. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's good. You that's can answer good. book questions we have. Yeah. Like, how do you oh, read God. them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the it's books are really It's probably a while since you read the book, eh? Uh, yeah, the book is like. I mean, do you want me to like talk about it or? Yeah, I'll, I'll be quick. The book. So the book is kind of strange because it's like written. So like the narrator. So it's first person narration, but it's written as if it's their voice speaking so like all their colloquialisms their accent and everything is like written in the book which takes some getting used to so for example um diane hers is like really easy to read because she's obviously like more of a upper class scott 
private then, school yeah <laughs> silver and, spoon feeding unbelievable <laughs> and then like uh renton is like quite hard to to read at times um hmm. but yeah the book is quite different from the film obviously one question that i have because i think we kind of mentioned this in the earlier part that you weren't present for and that's okay um <laughs> the relationship between diane and renton is really weird because she just kind of like blackmails him but then stick still like hangs around after he doesn't really hang out with her. Yeah. Does the book kind of go into more of like the relationship dynamic and how all that fits together? I honestly can't really remember that well, but I think it does. I think in the book, there's a lot more information on the relationships. There's even, I can't, it's been quite a while, but there was even a character that's not in the film, but they're in the book. Mm. I can't remember their name. I should have looked it up, but they they're they're in the book and uh they're really funny uh they do some really funny things especially in like restaurants and stuff (laughs) interesting so this is like kind of an abbreviated version of the book then yeah like most thing like most kind of book to films yeah that's a fair point yeah so I guess like bringing it back to the movie though, Molly, why is this your favorite movie of all time that you've watched 100 <laughs> times in a row? What makes you so drawn to it? Um, well, oh God. I think it was like, I, I don't know. I just like, I just love the film. I like, I love the soundtrack. The soundtrack to me like makes the film. Um, I think it it's is really good. It's really good. Like yeah. it sets the scene. It's, it just, it sets the time, like the era that the film is set in. I love the characters. I love Ewan McGregor, obviously. And I just find the film is dark enough to tell you a story about drug use, but it's not to the point where it's like shoving it down your throat, if that makes sense. Like there's some other films like Requiem for a Dream, which is like kind of, it's that's about drug use. That film's really dark. If that's a film that I've heard that I should watch, but it's also one that people always preface by saying that it's really hard to watch. The, the soundtrack so, in that is, this, is there's like certain scenes where like the music, again, it sets the tone of the scene. And even now, if I hear, if I listen to that soundtrack, I like remember the scenes. Like it gives me like skin, my skin crawls hmm. because it's just, it's, it's a, a pretty fucked up film. <laughs> can i swear uh, speaking <laughs> oh no, yeah we we're, we've been swearing already uh, okay. heck, sorry mom heck yeah you're you're darn right you can <laughs> speaking of things getting shoved down throats unfortunately uh ewan mcgregor's new diddy scene isn't shoved down your throat i tried to make something work there it didn't work it was a beautiful scene though i was not ready but one funny thing in that scene actually i noticed afterward i, I noticed while when it first cuts to ewan mcgregor being naked He's yeah. just naked, but then he goes out into the hallway and then removes a condom that wasn't there at first. <laughs> Were you taking yes. a hard look at his Yes, penis? I was. It was Ewan McGregor in the flesh in front of me. I don't know what they were talking about, Kyle. <laughs> Your FBI agent is looking like, what the fuck is this guy doing? <laughs> oh, I was right back in the movie. Oh. Oh, well, I guess we got to talk to Danny Boyle about that just horrible continuity that error. That horrible... Uh, content co- continuity, continuity. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> uh, so Molly you really like this film what are your what are your kind of favorite parts of it I love the part at the end when they're on the bus and they and like Renton is like getting high in the bathroom and like Bigby's just like mad and stressed I don't know why I love that part so much I just find it so funny maybe it's because Bigby's actually shaking in his yeah, boots a little bit it's just it's hilarious like um, and then I also like when they all decide to go back on uh, heroin and it like kind of shows them like it's like, you know, it's like a full time job and it goes through all the things that they're doing. Um, I find yeah. that fu- I mean, it's not funny. They're like stealing from like old people. But yeah, I just like how the scene like that kind of like sequence progresses. And then also when like Renton's in the club and like he he meets Diane for the first time. I just find that so funny. He's just such an awkward guy. And the way he like yeah. aggressively goes up to these like women to dance. <laughs> In his crop top. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and is not dressed for the club. <laughs> and like he's it's like his grid. Like he looks he looks crazed. Like it's, it's so funny. Those are like yeah. my favorite kind of scenes, I would say. Favorite parts. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, there, that's like that's a really good scene, and I like in in the club the conversation between Spud and Tommy, and cutting mm-hmm. between that and their girlfriend's conversation, and that ultimately culminating in the "What are you two talking yeah. about? <laughs> Football? <laughs> what are you talking about? Shopping?" Shopping. <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. Uh, one part that I also loved was uh, during like the kind of cuts between everyone having like a different sexual experience um, yeah. when. <laughs> uh what is it tommy is one of the the guy who uh, gets addicted to heroin yeah. later yeah. yeah when they're having sex what she thought was to their sex video and he's just intently watching <laughs> <laughs> the guy score the goal and not caring yeah. and then oh i, I like how the audio syncs up there too yeah, yeah. Oh, penetrating goal yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh. and everyone like comes at the same time as the goal gets yeah. scored yeah, uh, I like the bit afterwards when Spud like wakes up in the bed. Oh, and that's he's another just favorite everyone. scene. <laughs> yeah, Oof. it's the first time I saw that. I thought it was blood because Me too. it was like yeah. a weird color. But then you get the real sense of it once he throws it all over. Uh, I forget her name, but her family. Mm-hmm. I do love when he comes into the kitchen and he's like, "Oh, I had a bit." Like he wasn't, he wasn't hiding that he had an accident. Yeah, <laughs> the parents didn't care about that. It no, was just that like was super the cool. volume of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a like, bizarre. Had a thing. bit of an accident. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's all right, son. People are allowed to go a little crazy every now and then. Okay, I'm not going to try this. I'm going to go completely Irish. Yeah. It's not going to be consistent. Yeah. Yeah, no. What's your Do your best Scottish, Molly. No, I can't. I can just no? say like one word, like Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, Scotland. though. Scotland. Yeah. So are there any parts of this movie that you don't really like, Molly? Yeah, when I don't like when Renton like goes off uh, heroin. So, you know, when you like ODs and it's like family takes them back to the house. Right, I, don't, I really, right? yeah, I really don't like that bit. It's is because, that like a don't like because it's hard to watch, or you just don't like it? As in, like, you, I don't it's not like because of like the baby Don. That bit, yeah. like, oh really, yeah, it, the animatronic baby yeah, crawling across the ceiling. It, yeah. it just really creeps me out. And like again, another scene I don't like is when the baby they find the baby um, in the house. Yeah. It's that's what I mean, like about this film. Like, it's enough to it show it's. It goes in both directions yeah. pretty strongly. It shows like the pleasure of drug use in a way and like the high of it, but it also does show the cost of it at the same time. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's really sad. When is that scene of Mark having the withdrawals in the bed where you don't feel comfortable watching it because they keep cutting around, like he keeps flipping and flopping, yeah. the camera's always moving, goes under the cover, suddenly Franco's there. And it's just like it makes you feel as uncomfortable watching him go through that as you assume he would feel going through that. And it's not a fun experience to sit through. It kind of no. takes a toll when you watch that. Yeah. yeah. No, I totally agree. And like he's just like completely drenched in sweat and the mattress just looks looks like sp- Bud had just slept there or something. It was so wet. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, it's a hard scene. It kind of reminds me of this is another kind of film like The Basketball Diaries with like Leonardo DiCaprio, which is based on a true story. And I read the book for that one too. That's a, there's a scene with like Leonardo going like into a drawers, and that's like kind of similar to this one where it's just really hard to watch because it's like a physical withdrawal. Yeah, it's it's. That scene is just hard, but ma- yeah. mainly because of the baby and Tommy too. Like he's like looks so weird, like kind of skulking across the the wall. Oh, <laughs> when yeah. he like drags himself yeah. across the wall. <laughs> yeah, Mark is not a good person to Tommy, especially. Tommy gets done so dirty. Yeah, because um, mm-hmm. he didn't really necessarily deserve any step of the way. Because it's not his fault that his sex tape got stolen. No, it's not really his. Well. Mark should have told him to not try heroin, but then he flashed the dollar bills, and yeah, that's the end of that. Mark could have solved all of his problems, yes, because Tommy brought up to the the group that the sex tape was missing, and then you know it was with that, and also the fact that he had forgotten her birthday and was going to Iggy Pop on her birthday, and that sort of thing, all kind of built up to them breaking up. But it was the sex tape that really set her on that path. Mm-hmm. So Mark probably should have said i have your sex tape i'm sorry i thought it was in the you know he could have even lied he could have said oh you must have put it in the wrong thing sorry i I looked for it for like 10 seconds and put it back no big deal and then he tommy could have told his ex-girlfriend and then maybe they could have resolved some issues but he doesn't 
And then he also gives Tommy the access to heroin. I think mainly because of the money. Just because of the money, yeah. yeah. You can see that he really lit up when he was flashed those dollar bills because he just wants the access to more heroin later. Yeah. And like even when Mark is clean and he goes to visit Tommy, he gives him money well knowing that he's probably just going to put that on more. Oh, yeah. Guaranteed. Heroin. Yeah. Bad friend. But I guess that's part of the whole movie. In a way. Yeah. Because he's just a bad. Well, he's not necessarily down deep in his soul a bad person, but he is an addict and is willing to do literally anything to fuel yeah. that. And he's never been that nice to his friends. No. The only nice thing he ever did was give Spud some of the money at the end. Otherwise, yeah. he was just bad to them all over. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And like that's the thing about this these characters is a lot of them are also horrible. And so you don't feel as bad when Mark screws them over and treats them like shit because you see Begbie be like such an asshole like throw glass at women and kick guys just because he wants to fight people and sick boy's like a pimp and he's like ripping people off so you you're kind of on mark's like side like he's not like a he's not a protagonist you don't like Mm -hmm. i mean i i liked him i don't know about you guys i liked him overall yeah but like i think it because the rest of the group is so like awful in a way except for maybe spud like you don't feel as bad sad character because he's kind of like the comic relief. Yeah, yeah. Because if you think about what Mark does in this movie, he causes Tommy to go onto drugs because he screws him over with the sex tape. And then he steals all of their money afterwards. Like that's not great stuff. No, you, you don't still... do that and be a good person no. at all. Yeah. And I mean, he does say that at the end. He's like, I am a bad person, but like I'm going to change. Mm-hmm. And so I guess you, you're hopeful that he's going to be better. Obviously, this is a second movie. And that's why it makes it so hard in the moments where he is clean and he has to test the heroin because he's the only one who can do it. (laughs) Who was your favorite in this movie, though, Molly? What do you mean, like, favorite character? Character, actor, anyway. Probably Renton, but that's only because you follow him. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of told from his, like, limited perspective. So you kind of get, like... He probably puts himself in a better light than he puts anyone else in. Yeah. I agree. Like, Ewan McGregor does a really good job here. And actually, you know what? All the actors are pretty good. Yeah. They all, like, sell the vibe of it. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, you really hate Big B. Oh, my God. Because he really sucks. He sucks. But the actor does a good job. He really does. I like when he throws the glass and then comes down the stairs and basically makes this proclamation that nobody's getting out of there until they find <laughs> out who like injured this girl and then the guy's just like who the fuck are you <laughs> and then he just does this like scream and he's just like ah and then just kicks him in the nuts <laughs> like Molly can you confirm or deny that that's what bars are like in the UK <laughs> no they're not like I don't know about Scotland well, that's there's a fights and stuff yeah. like, wait there's I fights and all and all the bars that I went yeah. to in Scotland because <laughs> I've been there. As a tourist, whatever. As a tourist, yeah. I wasn't horribly robbed, but like that one American guy that was, was. That's so yeah. funny. <laughs> that was really funny. I liked how even in that scene, like Begbie's helping them rip him off. They're doing it for drug money, but like also the bartender is wearing the yes. tourist's <laughs> jacket afterwards. Oh, yeah. So like he's like helping them out. It's, Molly, you recommended me watch this movie. Yes. Um, Jason, would you, I, I guess this is kind of, going into our score later but like would you recommend this to anybody i don't know if i really would like it's such it's a really well done movie but it's just so dark that i don't really know if i want to like tell someone to watch it because even if you like the movie you're not having like a great time watching it i'm sure there's people who'd be interested in it but there's no one that i can think of who'd be like oh yeah you seem like a great you seem like a big heroin guy you'd love this film <laughs> Uh, Molly, obviously, you would recommend this to people. Yeah, because it's why a, did you recommend it to it's Kyle? A cult what was classic. going on there? It's like I always say to Kyle, I'm like Kyle, like says he's into films, but then hasn't watched films that are <laughs> recommended <laughs> by everyone. Independence Day either. Yeah, I like, had a fake fan. I think it's a film. It's just like a a good film. Like there's there's films that like people recommend to me that I would never watch because you know they're scary or whatever. I don't think this film's scary. It, it is hard to watch. Yeah, it is. But it's a good film. I would rec- yeah, it's, I would it's say- not too long either. Oh, well, it's no, it's just right. Perfect <laughs> runtime. The, the Goldilocks runtime. Yeah. Just right. I would say don't do what I did and watch this with your mom. 
<laughs> no. My mom didn't like it, but it's obvious it's like a really hard movie to watch at times, especially with those horrible scenes of like early on with the worst toilet in Scotland, like l- setting you up just for the shit that they're gonna go through yeah this is kind of like the trifecta things you don't want to watch with your parents like a lot of really gross jokes that are yeah. kind of like you know mm-hmm. silly boy like it, poop jokes yep and then sex. also a lot of sex scenes yep. um and, and heroin babies. usage yeah yeah and it's just kind of a sad movie it is yeah but i would probably recommend this to certain people mm-hmm. i do think you should watch it I th- I think yeah. it's 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 probably an important movie to watch, especially if you're a fan of Danny Boyle, mm-hmm. yeah, who's made some great films. Molly, are there any scenes that stood out to you that you really like the visuals for? Because like one really big one is uh, when you know Mark ODs, and it's it's a pretty shot. But mm-hmm. Is there anything like cine, cine- cinematically cinematically <laughs> that uh, stood out to you? Well, when he goes into the toilet to get that the. Is um, true. <laughs> the suppositories yeah like that's um i remember like watching that and like i still am unsure if it actually happened like i know it I sounds jason weird. and i actually just mentioned that in our, oh, okay. in our plot breakdown it's, it's yeah i don't think it happened because he's wet and everyone looks at him and he's wet yeah so it's like did like it's weird because it seems like people are looking at him and like he's like dripping wet but then he obviously didn't go down into the toilet because that's like impossible yeah yeah i think it was just like one of those movie things where it's not you have to it's it's a suspension of real world interactions and it was a metaphorical thing but it still had implication to the real world because i think everyone knew that he was on drugs i think was like that's why everyone was looking at him weird yeah because everyone looked at him weird when he came in Everyone was looking at him when he came out. Like he was just in the public eye for kind of being a seedy guy who walked into the worst toilet in Scotland just to, <laughs> you know, <laughs> absolutely I'm, erupt into it. Yeah, and exactly. Dig into it for drugs. I like when he gets those suppositories from his his other dealer, and he says the line, "For all the good they've done me, might as well have shoved them up my ass." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's some really good lines in there. Do you have any like standout lines, Molly, that you really like? Mm, I honestly can't remember. Oh, I like it just when uh when Brenton's talking about when they go for a walk, and he the like uh Tommy goes, oh like look at like you should be proud of this or something, and he's like, why should we be proud of being Scottish? Like we got colonized <laughs> by wankers. I just start laughing <laughs> yeah, at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so funny. Yeah, that's a good little moment. Yeah, and that's you. Yeah. Yes. You're the wanker who did You're that. The I am. <laughs> Personally responsible for colonizing Scotland. <laughs> Molly, you haven't seen the second movie of this. No, I don't want I don't want it to be ruined. I do that a lot. Okay. If there's like a oh, sequel. Oh, like you just enjoyed the first one enough. Yeah, like Have um, you read the second yeah. book? Yeah. Or did you I read, read the all first of book? them, but like Wait, is good. it more than two? Yeah, there's like a oh my god, there's like there's train spotting and then there's one after that called like Skag Boys, I think. Here we go, actually. I just picked up the Wikipedia. So in 2012, Welsh, Irving Welsh, he published a, a prequel to Train Spotting called Skag Boys, yep. set in Leith in the early 1980s. It introduces the Train Spotting characters and follows them as they fall into their heroin addiction. So it's like a prequel, Skag Boys. Mm-hmm. And then there's um, like another one, too. Is there any more like general thoughts or things that really stood out to you from this movie that you think about all the time or really like? Is a big train spotting moment, like the classic train spotting moment for you? <laughs> Honestly, it's just the music. Like, because I have the songs on my phone, like especially the end song when he's like leaving. That is like Born Slippy, that song. Well, it's not really a song, it's like whatever. But like that, I, it's just the soundtrack that really stands out, out for me. And I love how nearly all the artists that they have in the film, the characters refer to which makes it even yeah. more like oh, personable. So like they talk about going to see Iggy Pop, I- Iggy, Iggy Pop, Pop's yeah. in it. Uh, they mention Lou Reed, Lou Reed's in it. Like, you know, so it's I that mean, like- they mention Sean Connery and he's not in it. True. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like I know what you're saying. It's, yeah, it's, it's, just like, it's lived in. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's taking the, the music from their their actual lives, their conversations, and all those the, what they would were, listen to. Like Iggy Pop and Lou Reed were drug addicts too like i know icky pop was 110 percent cool when was the first time you watched this movie because you wouldn't have watched it in 96 (laughs) because that was your birth i think i watched it when i was like 15 or 16 i thought i was really edgy 
Yeah, that's probably that makes a little bit sense. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, do you think your opinion has changed on it over the years, or have you kind of stuck to the same sort of feeling about it? Mm, I think as I've got older, watching the film, I realized how like scary it is. If that makes sense, like how yeah, like the, how the horrors like it's like it's the just like, hit a little bit different. Well, yeah. it's just like how scary that life is, like being mm-hmm. a drug addict and like. It, that to me is like what's scary about the film and like and how easy it is to get in but yeah like, like look so at tommy to like out. he had yeah. like from all of them he seemed to kind of have everything going for him and because of his friends with people who are doing heroin which i you know i'm sure a lot of us probably wouldn't be friends with somebody who's doing that but he his life just falls apart and it falls apart more than the rest of them, which I find like yeah. ironic. Like he's the well, one who gets yeah, AIDS. Yeah, he went into it with like re- emotional distress to yeah. like, he did it as a response to like him getting broken up with. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. Like he, he does hit it hard. Like he, he's the only one that dies. Mm-hmm. And he gets AIDS. Like thought. he's the only one who yeah. gets HIV. Yeah. yeah. No, none of them do. And that's like another thing is like also goes to show that like during that time as well, I think there was like the whole like AIDS like epidemic and stuff like it was all coming out, but like yeah. it like it's just a game of luck. Like they were all she, like you see Renton like he's literally on the floor like looking for a needle after they find um, Don. They're all sharing like there's no mm-hmm. there's no worry about what they're going to get, and we never actually see Tommy doing drugs with them, which is like interesting to me too because I'm like where like in the film they do drugs not in the film in the books they do drugs together, but in the film they don't. That is interesting because he kind of gets into it after they're all off of it in a way. Yeah. Like you never see him taking part in their kind of crime of it, you know? No. And like in the, in the book too, there's like more kind of fucked up moments. And also like Renton has a brother, like you never Hmm. hear about that in the film. Yeah. He has a brother who dies and he's in the army and he dies. There's more characters involved with them. Yeah, it's just there's a lot more going on. In Do you the think book. there's enough in this book and the book series for it to be like remade at all or put into like a limited series in no, some way? No, I don't. No. no, never do that. No, it would just ruin yeah, it. Right. It's just like when people like sometimes do remakes and like redos, sometimes it just ruins the like the film is good. I don't think they should have made a second one, even though I haven't watched it. Like, <laughs> I don't want to watch it because I know I'll be disappointed mm-hmm. by it. I will say that it's not as memorable as the first one because I yeah. can't even tell you what happens. And I had to and, watch like a yeah. trailer to even remember what they looked like during it. And that's mm. what I remember you saying to me. And that's why I was like, I'm not going to yeah. watch it then because like, I just know I'll be disappointed. And like the film is the- just a good standalone film on its own. Yeah. And the first one is very memorable on its own. Yeah. Like, yeah. I will always remember various things that happen in this movie because it's like really powerful and yeah. scary. Yeah, mm-hmm. you definitely, re- you're going to remember, like, the haunting moments of, like, you know, obviously the baby and then, like, Mark going crazy when he's trying to get off drugs and, yeah, stuff like that. But mm-hmm. And, like, it really, like we said earlier, like, it really captures, like, the film isn't just, like, showing you what these what these people are doing. It feels like you're actually part of it. Like, you're there, you know, kind of a little fly on the wall. It's like you yeah. can, like, sometimes like it's like you you can smell the cigarette smoke in the pub. Like, you can, like, it's, they do, they do all that, like, so well in the film. And, like, one of my other favorite scenes is when uh, Renton, there's another thing where you can kind of feel the atmosphere when Renton goes to bingo night with his mom. And, like, oh, everyone's yeah, moving yeah. around him and he's just stationary. And I feel like yeah. it's a really like pivotal moment because you kind of realize he's he's depressed, he's bored, he doesn't know what to do. But also kind of like we've all kind of been in that situation where you're somewhere and it just feels like everything's passing you by and you're just stuck, if that makes sense. So that Yeah, like it shows how sad yeah. his life is outside of heroin because he's never had anything else going on for himself. No. Yeah. But to kind of wrap up here, Molly, what what would you kind of rate this film? Out of what? Five or ten. Out of your own rating. Wherever you want to go, oh, I'd give it like a like a ten out of ten. Really? Yeah, it's one of my Perfect favorite movie. films. Movie. It's one of my yeah. favorite films. Like, there's nothing That's I true. would change. There's nothing you would change. No. I'd have it not be in the UK, but that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> cool. I mean, yeah, that's it's all your opinion. So, like, I'm happy you really like it. Yeah, but I'm biased. Same if we do uh, another another podcast of my favorite film. I'll be biased yeah. about that too. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Like, we want somebody to come bring their passion and their joy about a movie uh, into this podcast because you can always feel the excitement when somebody's really into a movie. Are you going to do Ratatouille? With, I mean... We already talked about 2007 recently. <laughs> he never got his but, chance. Oh, that's so sad. <laughs> but I, I, I have been looking at like a, a potential like future 2007 rehash series, but it's going to be a couple years. It's a rehash trilogy of I, Ratatouille. Yeah, I want, I want you to get someone in who hates the film. Because that would be hilarious to listen to. <laughs> yeah, good luck finding someone who hates Ratatouille. Yeah, <laughs> really. I just like validated my opinions scene. on Ted Lasso last night. Like I was so happy. Our homegirl Keely says that Ratatouille is a fucking masterpiece, and that it's about art. Can good art can come from anywhere, and I just felt validated. <laughs> what do you mean good art can come from anywhere? Like Pixar Studios? <laughs> do you not understand the message of Ratatouille? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, shotgun. that's the whole message. Not everyone can be a great Good artist, art came but from a great France, artist like... can come from anywhere. What the fuck? <laughs> Amazing food was made okay, in France. We're done the with odds. we're done with ratatouille. Okay, this is in the episode about ratatouille. This what is about me train is they spotting. let the rat cook for them. That's always what's yeah, because he's amazing. Out. He's an yeah. amazing fucking cook. And Linguini was desperate. Okay, he really needed this job. He really needed so, him to. To anyways, I'm not. My gonna favorite get bit is it, the okay? grape scene. I'll say it. If no one's watched it, such up Ratatouille <laughs> grape scene. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for getting me on that tangent about Ratatouille, <laughs> Molly. Uh, do you have any other final remarks on Train Spotting? No, I think I said everything I have. I came here to say. Yeah, the ten out of ten says it all. It does kind of it say it all. It literally like. But uh, okay, well then we're gonna move on to our next section and say goodbye right now. But Molly, I'm giving you the floor to you. Do you have anything you want to plug? Yes, my YouTube channel. All right, I already mentioned it off the top, but we're gonna leave a link to Lucina Main in the show notes. So make sure to go and subscribe. She has some fun videos. Please subscribe. I only have ten subscribers, so if I get a couple more, it'll be great. <laughs> Well, thanks for joining us, Molly. We hope we can have you on again sometime. I hope so, too. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks, Molly. Bye. Thanks, Molly. Bye. Bye. Okay, well, now that she's gone, finally. <laughs> we're <laughs> of course, uh, very grateful to have Molly on. We're going to get into the reviews section now. So, Jason, mm -hmm. go ahead. All right. Um Kyle, do you want to just take just a little old stab at it? What do you think this movie did to the general audience and the critics out there? Yeah, I think the critics are probably going to love this. I'm going to say like high 80s. And then for the audience, I think they might have a harder time with it. I'm going to say like 75. All right, no. Uh, so Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, wrong. <laughs> wrong. He didn't study at all. Rotten Tomatoes, the critics gave it a 91. Damn, that's so pretty good. even better. And the audience is a smashing 93. They love it. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's actually quite uh, And Molly, 100%. Wow. <laughs> the critics loved it. Uh, IMDB gave this bad boy an 8.1. That's actually pretty high. That's pretty good. And Metacritic an 83. Shit, this did really this well, This was then. a very well-received movie. Wow. Which is incredible, given, you know, it's the obvious setback of being from the UK. It really <laughs> overcame a lot of odds, and it was uh, loved around the world. Good. For the box office, this was made on a budget of 1.5 million pounds, which is roughly 2.25 million dollars. That sounds reasonable. That sounds reasonable. That's less not a money huge than budget. Bottle Rocket. Yeah, what which I mean, like it, it is pretty compact in this. Yeah, when they made this one, like there's not that many actors. They did. Uh, Franco did actually kill a guy. That was most of the budget. Was the funeral costs, and <laughs> the family was quite upset about that. But the return on this was 40. Eight million pounds, which in real dollars is seventy-two million US. Ooh, that's, spicy. that's a massive return. Seventy-two on approximately two point two five. That's great. You can't go wrong with no, that. Absolutely. That's pretty good. The box office number it finished, or the peak at least, was number thirty-six. That's actually really high. And this was still a limited release movie. Wow. Yeah. 
people loved train spotting. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that kind of is why it's maybe stood the test of time and has the cults has so that it does. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know if I expected that when I was watching it because I really liked it. It was really well done. Yeah. But it was just so dark, but people really loved it anyways. Yeah. Maybe they like the darkness in this movie. Maybe I it's something about ourselves, <laughs> but probably not. All right. Score <laughs> and rankings. Kyle, we're going to start this bad boy off with you. What would you score this based off of your enjoyment? Yeah. As I kind of alluded to a little bit earlier, I think I enjoyed it the first time I watched it more than I did this time. Mm hmm. And I just, maybe it just wasn't as like memorable or didn't hit as hard. And so I'm going to go with a three out of five because I still did like it, mm -hmm. but it didn't hit the numbers that I th maybe figured it might. I don't know. Yeah. It's a weird one because the fact that this movie tries to grapple with heroin addiction is going to make it less enjoyable because it actually has like a powerful message. It's um, true. Yeah. So yeah, like enjoyment. I would give this a 2.5 where there were some funny moments and I will remember the really funny moments, but because it's such a dark movie, it's not like you leave feeling good about yourself afterwards. Yeah. 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 There are some like really fun scenes, but then it does like balance it out with those mm -hmm. really harsh moments. But yeah. I would give this a five out of five for making me never want to do heroin. <laughs> I already didn't want to, but now I don't really want to look at it. No. I still didn't want to do that before, but now I don't want to be in a room with it. <laughs> All right, moving along. Uh, the next section is going to be the craft. This is mm. what you thought of cinematography, costumes, score, and such. I really like this part of the oh, movie, yeah. especially with how I didn't know it was such low budget. Oh, yeah. And like, like Molly was actually saying in our conversation, the way that you can feel the air like you can feel the ambiance of, of the, the places that you're in, especially that the room like that they're like I guess heroin room. And so I'm going to go decently high on this. I'm going to give it like a four. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like that a lot. I would all, I'm going to give this one a 4.5. Oh, wow. Um, I really enjoyed where they put you into it. They didn't need to go like the costumes weren't crazy, but it's just a place that actually existed in a time that actually existed. So what do yeah. you, they're going to wear street clothes. So it fits, but I really love that little drug den that they had because yeah. it felt like a crappy rundown drug den mm. that you would find a dead baby at. Yeah. They really hit the nail on the head with that one. And you can't ignore the worst toilet in Scotland. <laughs> you can't because it just sticks with you. Yeah, it does. Um, mm. Yeah. I might no, I was thinking about going higher, but I don't know. I think I'm okay. Yeah. Before. And the soundtrack was amazing. That yeah, was a very really good bumping. point. It is an incredible soundtrack. Mm. So yeah, I really liked the the craft of it. All right. The execution. I think I'm also high on this one too. I think I'm also at a four because I really liked the acting in this. Mm -hmm. I thought that especially Ewan McGregor really kind of showed the range of emotions of like the highs that he was feeling and even like Spud, who was like kind of a, like a bumbling character, but like you get that really hard hitting moment at the end where he's trying to tell Mark not to leave. And so I think I'm also a four on this one because I, the writing was good. The writing is really good. It yeah. is a really good screenplay, even being based off a novel. I'm also going to give it a four. Cool. I really liked the execution, like all the characters, like the acting was so good. Spud felt like that one kind of dumb friend that you just love to have yeah. around because he says the darndest things. And Begbie is the one person you don't want to be and around. And Begbie is the guy that you don't want to, no one really wants to hang out with yeah. him, but everyone's way too scared to ask him to leave. <laughs> so he's going to hang around fighting yeah. people. And like... Especially that scene where he throws the beer glass into that guy's throat. Like, it's so fucking tense. And it's all on, I don't remember the actor's name, but it's all on his performance there. Kevin McKidd. Kevin McKidd. Kevin McKidd. Yeah, Kevin McKidd here, like, he commands that room. Yeah. And, like, you, yeah. It just oh, he was not the kidding around. Tension there. All right, this one is going to be the roughest one, I believe. A rewatchability. Mm. Yeah. Obviously, I watched it three times this, this week. That is a. It was. Task. I didn't watch it. Okay, I didn't watch all ninety minutes of it. Mm -hmm. The first time I watched the full ninety minutes or ninety-seven minutes or whatever it is. Ninety-three, but that's yeah. okay. Second time I was like around a half an hour after skipping through to get the plot, and then the third time was about like forty-five minutes in total. But I still watched it start to finish. However, I don't think I'm like as low as maybe you're thinking of being. Yeah, you can you can see it in my eyes. Yeah. So, I could probably will watch this again. So I'm probably gonna go three. That's fair. That's a, I'm giving this a two. I 
almost want to go lower, but I don't think I will. I think once I have a little bit of time, if mm. this was in a room, I wouldn't leave. Right now, and probably for the next like two weeks, if this was in a room, I'd probably be like, yeah, I kind of want to do something else. I'm not yeah. ready to watch this one again. It's not one that like you would actively avoid. It's no. not like, uh, what did we give like a 1.5 to? Was like uh, Larry Flint? Was that? <laughs> I think Larry Flint was probably your lowest. You might have yeah. gone there. I was a little bit higher on Larry Flint. Yeah, I like just didn't want to watch it again. This one no. I will watch again, and yeah. so like I can't go any lower than that. All right, all right. That tally it? that up. This is such an interesting one because it only was un- like it gets docked in two categories because of how good of a job it did. <laughs> yeah, I gave it a fourteen. You gave it a thirteen. Hey, that might have been our biggest disagreement yet, yeah. an entire point instead of just a point five. <laughs> yeah. And so we're still decently not in agreement. Yeah, kinda, yeah. yeah. You got any funny letter Oh, reviews? I got a couple. This yeah. was actually a pretty good one. All right. So Alabama underscore Warley, 0.5 stars. I watched this in my buddy Brian's basement on VHS, but he kept saying all the lines before they would happen. <laughs> So Brian's kind of a shit guy to watch a movie with. <laughs> Brian, Can you is... blame train spotting for Brian though? God damn it, Brian! <laughs> Brian, get your shit together. How many times has Brian watched this? Yeah, movie? really. <laughs> I mean, Brian is not at a half star, but you made you made the experience a half star worthy yeah. for Alabama. We hope Brian guy. came through and gave this multiple five stars to balance out what Alabama Warley just did. Yeah. All right, we got a couple more. Grasso guy, zero point five stars. Trains Bond. (laughs) I don't know if it was. I'm guessing it's because Sick Kid does the Sick Boy. Sick Boy. (laughs) Sick Kid. That's the baby. Oh, because he does all the Sean Connery stuff. He does the Sean Connery stuff. So I guess this was a train spotting James Bond pun, but was tied to a 0.5 star (laughs) rating. (laughs) <laughs> All right. Okay, I got one more. Uh, this was the highest rating of the three. L. Borgia Rossetti gave it one star. Three words, overrated. That's t- is that one word? That's one word. That's one- <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Wait, three wait, words, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> overrated. And that was it. Did he forget the other three <laughs> or the other two? <laughs> didn't care to finish. <laughs> they were so done with this movie. They didn't yeah. bother. They they came to the concise idea that they had three words for this piece of work. I mean, but didn't deserve to give them. Do you count three and words you as can't. the other two words? That's, no, that's insane. Three words you underrated. Can't count that's that. three words. <laughs> no, you can't do that. <laughs> that's illegal. <laughs> they just had two other words and didn't think train spotting deserved to hear them. <laughs> But anyways, on to the award details. All right. This was nominated for one Academy Award. Kyle, oh. if you had to just take one stab at it, what do you think this was nominated for? Interesting. I actually didn't think it was going to be nominated for any awards. But if I had to guess, it's based on a book, Adapted Screenplay. Best Adapted Screenplay. Hell it yeah. was nominated for Best Adapted Screenplay. Did not win. No. Unfortunately. That was the only Academy Award nod that it had. Mm-hmm. However, this thing cleaned up. In the UK, it was nominated for and won the BAFTA for Best Original Screenplay. It was also nominated for Best British Film, although I didn't read that it won that, which is bizarre because this is like highly regarded as one of the best British films. So maybe they were just late to that one. I don't know. know. Uh, It also won the Golden Space Needle Award for the Best Film at the 1996 Seattle International Film Festival. Interesting. Yeah. So it did pretty well. It had a a pretty good award run, especially with the BAFTA win. Yeah. The Oscar nom. Good for it. Yeah. Does that make sense to you? Anything else you think was uh, snubbed or dubbed from that? I mean, that's more finale conversation, but like there are Mm -hmm. some performances in here that are good. Nothing yeah. so crazy, yeah. Nothing like so it crazy. was, it was a really well done movie, but yeah, like no one part really outshone the rest. Yeah. Some interesting facts. Kelly McDonald who played Diane, in her naivete, invited her mother and brother to the set while filming her sex scene with Ewan McGregor. (laughs) Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, so if you think watching that movie with your mom was awkward, imagine filming that movie with your mom (laughs) while having sex with Ewan McGregor. (laughs) Maybe maybe her mom was a big Ewan McGregor fan. And and she's like, Mom, I'm going to go fuck Ewan McGregor. (laughs) Come watch. I want you to watch. Or she was more coy about it. She says, come to the set today. Yeah. 
<laughs> you're gonna <laughs> like it. Yeah. And then just fucking gets naked. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what am I doing? Oh, is that Ian oh, McGregor? Do you like Ian McGregor? <laughs> I'm just going to get on top of him real quick. Oh, his cock is out. <laughs> <laughs> but is there a condom on it? We don't know. No, we, we didn't don't decide know. in time. Oh, come on, man. Oasis was asked to contribute to the soundtrack, but Noel Gallagher declined as he thought the film was actually about train spotting. <laughs> However, he would later attend the launch party. Oh, so, good for him. <laughs> I like that Oasis was too good to be in a movie about actual train spotting. Yeah. Or that he just didn't look closer <laughs> into that. Um, and one last quick wholesome one, All right. um, because it's not the most wholesome movie. Danny Boyle used twins to play the part of Baby Don, which meant neither baby was forced to be in front of the camera for too long. All of the cast would play with the two babies between takes to break the tension of the often difficult scenes they were about to shoot. Aww. Folks, they played with babies. That's beautiful. That's very sweet. Yeah. That is so and sweet. And neither of them died. So and neither of them really died. Well, uh, one day. One, maybe one day. <laughs> one day they would. What do you mean maybe, Kyle? <laughs> okay, they yes, will definitely, die. Death is inevitable. They were okay. born to die. All right. Season ranking is the okay. next section. Kyle, Actually, before we get oh. into this, I feel like we should address, because people will always say, like, what is the title? What does it even mean? Mm -hmm. Do you know what it means? I looked it up okay. and I kind of got an idea of what it means. Though I've heard so many different explanations yeah. for it. But from what I read, and you can confirm nor deny this to your reading, yep. was that people often shot up in train stations. Hmm. So it was associated with that. And there was some other thing about like having nothing else to do, but like counting trains or something like See, that. See, that's where I... What I learned about it was that it was about just like obsession with a mundane activity. Oh, like, yeah. Just like being, yeah, like obsessed with something so mundane. And like, mm -hmm. obviously, the whole movie is about addiction in one way or another. Like, the brunt force of it is heroin. Yep. But then Begbie is like addicted to fighting people and alcohol. And then he even mentions his mother, who is addicted to Valium and like, his you know people are tommy and, and them are like maybe addicted to sex and just like it's just yeah. like whatever you are addicted to like it's is there anything that's even better mm -hmm. you know is there a better addiction to have you know but. yeah mark was addicted to just being a dick to his friends too <laughs> yeah unbelievable yeah but but season rankings yeah kyle where are you slotting train spotting in it's actually becoming more interesting because we have five in there now. We do have There's five in there. There's actually choices where to slot these in. I mean, there has been choices, but mm -hmm. for the most part, except for Fargo, which went straight to the top, <laughs> we've been oh, usually yes. kind of slotting them in lower, except for Bottle Rocket, which took over Primal Fear. Um, ah. I'm, I'm grabbing up the ranking right now because I actually need just a quick little, a little refresh. Uh, refresh, refresh a of... I mean, we both have the same ranking, which is Fargo, Independence Day, Bottle Rocket, Primal Fear, and then The People versus Larry Flint at the bottom. Yeah. That's how it looks right now. Where I'm going to land, I think this goes below Bottle Rocket, but above Primal Fear for me. So this slots into fourth place. I am probably going to slot this one in lower. I'm going to put it below. Oh, but it's so good. I'm actually, <laughs> I think I'm going to. You going to agree? Slide it in below Bottle Rocket <laughs> and above Primal Fear. <laughs> and it's going to be fourth. Yeah. God damn it, Kyle. I'm sorry that I made the best choice possible because yep. I don't like this more than Bottle Rocket. Nope. And I, but I do like it maybe more than. But Primal it's a Fear. better put together movie. It's a better movie than Primal Fear yeah. is. And Larry Flint. Yeah, yeah obviously. Well, I said that goes yeah. for its own saying. But it's not better than Independence Day, Bottle no. Rocket, or definitely not Fargo. If for me, this could be like a two A two B, where it's so close to Bottle Rocket, but in such a wildly different way. Yeah. Um, but I think I'm gonna leave it. Yeah. In in three, but like spiritually, it could be tied with Bottle Rocket for mm -hmm. me. Well, there's a lot of opportunity for this to get more interesting. Every so. week, there's a new chance <laughs> that we will squander. I think we were tracking like how long Independence Day was going to stay at number one. I mm -hmm. guess we're also kind of now tracking how long Fargo's going to stay at number one. 
but we should also be tracking how long we have the same exact ranking. <laughs> it's never going to end. <laughs> no. Like, I I mean, at least as the season goes on, the difference between movies is going to become so small that it could yeah. go anywhere. And it could be like the day of the week, the mood we watched it in that determines if it's slightly better or worse than Bottle Rocket. Yep. Yeah, because there's going to be actually be interesting questions. There's more to compare it to. Yeah. Folks, we'll get there. One day we're going to give a movie <laughs> a wildly different rating, and we're also going to slot it wildly and differently into the ranking overall. But today... Not that day. Not that day. <laughs> this not movie. That movie. You're not that guy, pal. You're not that you're guy, not, guy, You're not pal. that guy. <laughs> you're not that movie, movie. <laughs> well, maybe it could be the next one. So let's wrap up, and we'll talk about it a little bit. I want to thank you guys for listening to Season 1, Episode 6 of Stumps and Dubs. And, of course, another big thank you to our guest, Molly, Again, I've left all of her links in the show notes below. As always, you can find us everywhere on social media at Snubs and Dubs. That's on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Letterboxd, etc. We're also on Good Pod, so make sure to check us out there and join our official Discord. I would love to hear you guys' thoughts on these films and on this episode, so please send a tweet or a message with a question, recommendation, or anything else. I'm also at Kyle Tobias on Twitter, and Jason is at Windy underscore Mills. Of course, all of those links are going to be in the show notes below. And actually, if you're following us on social media, you usually get a little bit of a a sneak peek ahead. We usually announce two movies ahead, which gives you enough time to go watch it. So if you're interested about what we're going to be covering, just follow us on social to get in the know. There was a fruit fly on my paper. <laughs> oh, so like, wow, that was an emphasized point. <laughs> People, I'm scared for you if you don't follow us on socials. Also, please make sure to leave a five-star review. We would really appreciate it. If you had a five-star review right now, I would be reading it off on the show. So go ahead and do so, and we will give you a shout-out in the next episode. Make sure to check back next week for another episode in Season 1. Here's a sneak peek of the film we're going to talk about. Forty years ago, under Sheriff Charlie Wade, Rio County was as corrupt as they came. That Sheriff Wade, he could get ugly. Then, Buddy Deed showed up. How about you lay that shield on this table and vanish? You're a dead man. That's right. Next episode, we're going to be talking about Lone Star. So make sure to go watch that before the next episode so you know what we are talking about. I can't wait for you guys to hear it. Thanks for listening. That's a wrap. Bye for now. (laughs) Bye. Bye.